Hey guys, this is Slimin. I'm bringing you a quick review today of the Celestron Nexstar 8SE. The uh, Celestron 8SE is a Schmidt Cassegrain style telescope. It has a 8 inch mirror, obviously designating from the 8 in the 8SE name, uh, with a focal length of 2032 millimeters. Uh, it comes with a red dot finder, which is, I'll be honest, pretty junky. I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, a star diagonal and a 25mm eyepiece. Also comes with an RS-232 cable to connect your telescope to a computer. Um, it also comes with a pretty nice manual and a CD with the Sky planetarium software on it, the amateur version of that. Um, comes with a little wrench for adjusting the, the uh, Air, the aircraft nut inside of it if you need to adjust the clutch at all um, or tighten it and obviously what you would expect comes with the telescope. Things that don't come with it that I'd highly highly recommend and there's only one product that I would highly highly recommend and it is the power adapter that you see here. These things will eat up eight AA batteries. This is the first thing I got with this best thing I got. Power adapter is an amazing, amazing product for this and it should come with it but it doesn't. Then there's just your accessory tray down at the bottom you see there. Uh, I never use it just because it's metal on metal it can scratch up your eyepieces or number two uh, if you're moving your tripod around you don't even realize it they could fall out. I don't have any experience doing that because I never use it. The Nexstar ASE comes with the new Nexstar Plus hand controller. This thing is pretty awesome, I'll admit. There's over 40,000 objects in that database. Uh, you have your, once it's aligned, you can press here for your solar system objects, or I'll just hit back here. So you got Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, as well as the Moon and the Sun. And remember, never look at the sun unless you have a solar filter. Then you have stars. You, have, you can look at constellations, double stars, named stars, the SAO, variable stars, asterisms, look through those. You have deep sky. And this is where I learned a lot from the 8SE, was the deep sky tab. Anytime you're aligned, it will show you what's up in the sky to look at. Sometimes you can't see everything. Um, that's listed under there, but I did learn quite a few deep sky objects like the double cluster, um, the uh, wild duck cluster, and there's been an, uh, uh, M81 and M M82, uh, Bode's Nebula. So the deep sky tool is pretty awesome. So you can either go named objects, you can use the new general catalog, a bell, Caldwell, CCD objects. And what a CCD object is is basically a charge coupled device for people that like to image and I'll discuss imaging with this camera in a little bit. You have the IC and Messier and that's that. You just type those in with the hand control. You have the identify feature. You have the sky tour feature which is kind of neat. Can, if, you don't, if you're not really familiar with astronomy or just want you to take or you want the telescope to take you places after a successful alignment this sky tour button can do that. Now here's your scroll. This will scroll through the hand controller. These won't. These actually move the telescope. See that? These are what you can use to scroll through the menu. You have your help, your menu, which is a great menu. You can adjust tons of things and make your uh, telescope really yours. Uh, this will tell you what firmware that you're running. Here's your object info, which is kind of neat. Let's go to one real quick. Just hit Mercury, hit Object Info. It says Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. Then it gives you the distance, which was 36 million miles, and is less than half the size of Earth. So you get the picture there. Then you have your motor speed. If you want to increase that, you can just select here and press a number, and it will it will do that for you. So the the hand control is really nice. I really like how they updated that for you. So 40,000 objects, super easy to align, enter, back, etc. 
you have your menu where you can adjust your tracking, your time site, your hand control, uh, utilities, user objects, all that good stuff. So the hand control is definitely awesome on the Nexstar ASE. One thing that I'm pretty critical of on the Nexstar is the finder scope that it comes with. It comes with this flimsy little plastic piece of junk is really what it is. It turns on on the side here. Um, has these adjusting knobs, but the problem is they don't adjust far enough. So the first time I went at, was out with this scope, I tried to align this to Polaris, and I cranked these knobs as hard as they would go, and they would not move. So every time I, every single time that I adjust this scope or I'm looking for a star, I have to put it about an inch high and a sixteenth of an inch left, and that will get the star in the center. So the 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 finder scope is junk. You should definitely replace it with a Telrad as soon as you can. Or something that's just better than this one. I would not recommend it. It's flimsy, it's junky, and I don't like it. That's just my opinion. You may love yours. I don't like mine. The next thing I'd like to look at real quick is the star diagonal that comes with the scope as well as the 25mm eyepiece. This star diagonal is great. I haven't seen a need to upgrade it myself. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of visual um, astronomy anymore, but this is a good star diagonal and it gives you really good contrast clear views. If you want a less glass in between the diagonal and the eyepiece, obviously you just have to take out the eyepiece and stick it in directly like that. So the, uh, the star diagonal is really good. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that for you. Okay. So the star diagonal is actually a really good product that comes with this scope. The 25mm eyepiece is also a good product. Gives you a decent field of view, decent magnification, and decent uh, light gathering. So, or the the light the telescope does all the light gathering, but this is it's decent. It's a good focuser. And uh, I like this. This is actually happens to be one of my favorite eyepieces is a 25mm. A lot of people, when they first get a telescope, they think it's all about magnification, but that's not true. On deep sky objects, the lower the magnification, the better, in my opinion. So that's the 25mm eyepiece. Then you also get a visual back, which comes standard on your scope. This is a one and a quarter inch visual back. You saw stick the eyepiece or the diagonal or whatever you want in there, a next image camera, a CCD. That's a visual back. Then, if you'd like to stick on a focal reducer or some other accessory, you can do that. Just screw it on the back. And there's actually two reasons that I just put the focal reducer on there. I'll explain those to you. So I'm going to put the visual back right on over that. Number one is I wanted to show you that you can take the visual back off. And number two is you can actually attach a DSLR prime focus to your telescope. If you have the right adapters, a T-ring and a T-adapter, simply just screw it onto the back there and you have your DSLR attached. Did I say that? DSRL? No, DSLR, excuse me. <laughs> so, and the other point I wanted to make is you don't, you want to leave the telescope open as short as possible. You don't want any dust or anything getting in there. So as soon as you take something off and you expose the innards of this scope, you're going to want to get something on it and get it over it. Cover that up because it's still open like that. So that's the viewing end, the optical train. And now I'll just kind of explain what type of telescope it is and how it works. Okay, so the Nexstar 8SE is a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Let's just look down at the central mirror. So you have a corrector plate. This is where your light enters. Then the light comes through the tube and hits the primary mirror back here, which is eight inches, and that's where you get the eight. 
It's an 8 inch mirror, an 8 inch telescope. So it hits the mirror back here. You can see that right down here. And then it comes back and hits the secondary mirror right here. And the secondary mirror is just behind this. It's this little circle. Then after the light reflects off the secondary mirror, it actually goes down into a little light tube, out the telescope, and into the eyepiece and into your eye. So that's how it works. So it just goes in, back, in, and into your eye. It's a very simple design. It's pretty neat. These telescopes, the new version, are fast star compatible. So you just unscrew here and uh, screw in your, your fast star, and you're good to go, but that's extremely expensive. Uh, it is a 2000 uh, focal length, 2000 millimeter F10. Uh, by attaching a focal reducer like the one I showed you, that will get your scope down to about an f6.3. Uh, what that does is that allows you to gather more light quicker and it's a field flattener. So if you're wanting to look at deep sky objects like a star cluster or a globular cluster, galaxy or whatnot, getting a focal reducer is actually going to give you a lot better views. And I've noticed that. I've looked several times through this telescope at f10 and f6.3 and I will always have a focal reducer on there if I'm looking at DSOs. Here's where my thoughts on the usefulness of the Nexstar ASE come into play. Do you want to do some astrophotography? You might say yes. Well on this telescope I'm sorry to disappoint you but I'd say no. Uh, I've done astrophotography through this telescope um, and you're limited to about 30 second exposures if that. You're going to start to get star trailing and the reason because of that or the reason that is is because you're on an alt altitude azimuth mount so it doesn't uh, it doesn't align to the equator of the earth so you're going to get some star trailing. However the 8SE takes phenomenal planetary images with a uh, CCD or uh, a webcam. I have the Celestron Nex Image 5 Solar System Imager and I love that camera. So this is really good at planetary work and for visual astronomy but I would not recommend this for astrophotography. Uh, if you'd like you could spend a little bit more and get an uh, equatorial mount then you can do as much astrophotography as you want but this is designed to be a fast setup, easy alignment, an amazing visual astronomy telescope and that's what it is. I think it does amazing things visually. The moon is incredible, absolutely incredible through this telescope. It's deep sky objects, the Sombrero Galaxy, M81 and M82, um, the Double Cluster, the Wild Duck Cluster. There are some amazing stuff that this 8 inch mirror will let you see. And that is why I really like this telescope is because it's easy to align. You can take it outside and get it aligned in two minutes. Your go-to's are very accurate. There's different methods of getting a alignment. You have the solar system align, a one star align, a two star align, an auto two star, an auto one star, or sky align. And there's, so there's so many different ways to align your telescope that this is really where the telescope shines. It's super easy to set up and it's great for visual astronomy. As far as astrophotography goes, I can't recommend it for that. However, the, the telescope really wasn't designed for astrophotography, and it makes me wonder why Celestron put an auto-guiding port. There's an auto-guiding port on the mount here. Why would anyone need an auto-guider on something like that? I don't know. There's also an auxiliary port, so you can get a GPS if you'd like. That way it even increases the speed of your setup time. But the, the Celestron 8, or the Nexstar 8SE, is quite possibly one of the best beginner um, visual telescopes. And even if you're not a beginner, I'm not a beginner, this telescope's amazing. So if you want to be, if you're, in, uh, if you're just getting into astronomy or whatnot, and you get yourself a Nexstar 8SE, you're going to get yourself a fine, fine telescope. It's one that I'll always like. It has the orange paint on it, the classical orange paint from like the 1970s, and it's it's an awesome telescope. I'd highly recommend it. I'd, I'd give it eight, 8 stars out of 10. And the reason it gets 8 out of 10 is, well there's a few. 
One, it doesn't come with a power adapter. That bothers me that they don't include that with their telescopes. Because I don't think you should have to go and buy batteries all the time or buy additional accessories. I think it should come with a way to power um, or with a an outlet for power. The other thing that I don't get is why they include these bad red dots. It's really not that hard to make one that's a little bit better than that or a little bit more quality. The red dots bother me and they're just going to waste your time. And with this telescope, you take this out to a dark site, you have to remove everything, remove the telescope from the fork arm. When you reset it back up, your red dot finder is going to be off and it's going to take you a while to figure out what you're looking at because it's so bad. <laughs> so there you have a, a look at the 8FC. It's really easy to use. I'm not even aligned, I'm just driving it around. So you don't have to get an alignment to use it. I mean, you can just go outside, plug it in, and look at whatever you want. It's not going to track it, but it's you can look at whatever you need. It's a beautiful looking telescope too, I'll admit. I really like the look of it. So that's just a basic look at the Celestron Next R 8SE. A quick overview. If you're looking to do astrophotography, you'll need an equatorial mount. I mean, you don't absolutely have to have one, but trust me, you'll want one. The other things, visually, this, this telescope can't get any better. The views are stunning, they're crisp, and they're sharp. With a good focus, you're going to have hours of amazing fun in some evenings, learning, seeing the stars, seeing some nebula, galaxies, planets. The, uh, the next r 8 se does that. The optical system is designed well. The light follows a path, hits that mirror, bounces back to the secondary mirror, and goes through the, uh, goes through the telescope into your eyepiece. It's just a great telescope. I would definitely, definitely recommend the Celestron Nexstar 8SE. Well, thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you liked that review of the Celestron Nexstar 8SE. Uh, some things I did forget to mention was the price. Generally, it's about $1,200 US dollars. It's a great price, I think. You can find them cheaper, so go that route if you'd like. But it, I think it's a good deal for an excellent, excellent telescope. The views are amazing. Don't get me wrong. They really are. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching again. Subscribe. Leave some comments if you have any. And uh, have a good day, guys.